Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the incoming president of Coca-Cola North America, Jim Dinkins. Good afternoon, everyone. It looks like we've still got a lot of people enjoying their break. So I'll just wait just a minute and we'll get started. Well, as uh, the uh, announcer said, I'm Jim Dinkins. I'm the incoming group president for Coca-Cola North America. I've had the chance to meet several of you while, I'm, while I've uh, been here this morning, and so I'm looking forward to working with you. My official start date is January 1, so I'm looking forward to that. How many of you from the North America live in North America? Most of you? Okay, excellent. So we'll be able to talk about the North American business, and, and what I want to do is share, share a little bit of information with you about the marketplace, which I know you're very familiar, but talk about our growth model, and then talk about three key strategies that we're focused on in North America to drive growth. The first is building strong, strong brands. The second is creating customer value. And the third is building our capabilities to sustain and repeat results. So as my colleagues have done, here's our forward-looking statement. And then here's an outlook on a roadmap of, of the marketplace. Coca-Cola North America, as, as many of you know, is the flagship market for the Coca-Cola company. There's over 350 uh, million consumers in the marketplace, of which many of you are, so thank you for your business. Please drink a lot when you're here. Really appreciate that. Uh, but it's a big marketplace. There's over $200 billion in retail value in the marketplace. And, and as you can see, we've got, a, we've got a good business in North America, $10 billion in revenue in North America. And we've been able to maintain and grow value share for 30 consecutive quarters. And as you can see our pie chart across our portfolio, a little more diverse than some of you maybe you've seen today, uh, except for Japan. And uh, we, we enjoy a number one position across many of those categories. And the other thing that's material, as you've heard about, is we have finished our map. So James talked about finishing the map, and you, you probably heard from Sandy Douglas over the last few years about that initiative. And a few weeks ago, that was complete. So we're really excited about that. The other thing that might be new to you is how much growth opportunity there is in North America. You saw some of the developing markets, but, but let's look at North America. Over $30 billion of growth over the next three years. $30 billion. And in that, $20 billion of that growth is going to come from categories where we have a 25 or less year. And then there'll be over $7 billion of growth in categories where we have a leading share. So I feel like coming into this role, although I've worked in North America for 25 years, that North America is a big market with big opportunity. So let's take a minute and look at the growth model that we as a team developed a few years ago. And we affectionately call it the 54321 strategy. Maybe you've seen this before, our model. And it starts with our key metrics, five key metrics. Incidence, margin growth, revenue, value share, and transactions. And the key takeaway, which you heard from a lot of my colleagues today, is the movement from volume to value. The fourth element, the fourth number in the 54321 is around categories, four category clusters around sparkling and hydration and juice, plant and dairy, tea and coffee, and our partnership with Monster. Three, in it, three advantage routes to market, which is really unique for our North American business, a strong food service business, a DSD business that most of you are familiar with with our bottlers, but also having one of the largest uh, warehouse chill businesses in the United States. Where our brands come to life is through our sales force, two large sales forces in the food service and on-premise business and also with national retail sales. Now, most recently, I was working in national retail sales and the Minute Maid business unit in Chilled, so uh, I enjoyed doing that that all comes together for one vision and one team, a vision and a team for Canada and for the United States. And that team is focused on three key strategies, building strong brands, creating customer value, and building our capabilities to sustain and repeat results. 
So I'm going to spend the rest of my time talking about those areas. Before I do that, I want to talk about what have been our results. How have our results been? We well, can see that we've been driving growth. For the last three years, organic revenue of plus four, price mix of plus four with a combination of movement into categories and also diversification of packages. And then profit before tax of 6% by doing the two things I just mentioned and also leveraging productivity, which is translated into value share. Value share across the categories above, soft drinks, juice, dairy, plant, tea and coffee and energy, but some work to do in hydration. And we're developing plans right now and implementing them in the marketplace to address that opportunity. So let's talk about building strong brands. North America is well positioned to execute the Beverages for Life strategy. And as you heard today, I'm going to talk about the leadership position and then the explorer position. And the leadership position around our sparkling portfolio and the explorer position around how you've heard about VEB or Venturing Emerging Brands. I'm going to talk more about that, about how we explore, uh, how we build explorers by finding and nurturing uh, uh, early brands. So let's talk about sparkling. As you see in our part sparkling portfolio, we've been successful around base core Coca-Cola One Coke with original Coke and Coke Zero growing at plus one percent. And you can see Fanta and Sprite at plus six percent. Now Diet Coke isn't doing what we want so far. As you can see, it's minus four, but we're working hard on Diet Coke. We have plans to improve that number. Now, the, the model for success that we've implemented in North America around our sparkling business is really comprised of four key elements. The first one is around media investment, having great content where we can reach the target consumers in ways that they want and invest at a double-digit level in, 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 in investment in media to reach those consumers. The second is around segmentation, having the right packages in the marketplace that meet consumers' needs. The third is around innovation. Innovation not only in packaging and uh, products and promotions, but also in technology and equipment. So you might be familiar with the Freestyle platform. Well, the Freestyle platform is an excellent example of innovation and sparkling that unlocked the choice barrier for us in sparkling beverages and fountain. And it also gives us information about how consumers buy our products so that we can then innovate around that information. And last but not least is execution making sure we work with our bottling partners in this example to meet the consumer's needs quickly in the stores they serve. So I want to double click on Coke Zero Sugar. We've talked about that a lot today, but I'll talk about what we're doing in North America and specifically in the United States. So we've talked about sharing uh, information between countries. Well, this is an example of how we've imported a best practice from the UK. And we imported that best practice around a lot of the things you see at the bottom linked to the model that I just explained. So first, we had significant media investment. Media investment where the core target lives and the platform we used for that was ESPN College Game Day. The second area was segmentation. So you can see mini cans, you can see glass packages, you can also see a frequency pack in 12 packs. Innovation, changing the recipe, having the product taste more like original Coca-Cola with zero sugar and zero calories. And then execution, making sure that we develop the stores and hit the stores quickly and get that up to, to speed quickly with our new bottling system, our new franchise bottling system. And what have been the results? A plus seven point increase in trends since we've implemented this process. So really, really great success on Coke Zero Sugar. So let's pivot to Explorer Brands. You've heard about VEB during the day, but I want to give you some more detail and dig into that a little closer. So venturing and emerging brands is a group we have that goes and finds Explorer brands, and they have a model that they implement around four key areas. The first one is leveraging the industry know-how that we have across our system. And a lot of that has to do with insights about the business and insights about consumers. The second area is around leveraging our world-class commercialization capabilities across lots of areas of the business, but specifically brand building, helping these young brands understand their consumer and understand the opportunity. The third area is around the business model. And you can see we use a venture, uh, a venture approach or either a minority investment 
or either actually an outright acquisition. And then lastly, what's really great about our model in North America is our multiple routes to market. We can leverage these brands and leverage those, those routes to market to drive these brands faster. So let's look at an example that we feel like is a brand that has real edge in Francisco's terms, and that's Fairlife. Has everybody tried Fairlife out in the back? If you don't, please get a chance to do it. It's an amazing brand. And venturing emerging brands were able to find Fairlife and, and find it in the marketplace and, and see the edge that it had. And the edge that it had really fell in three areas. One is that one of the founders was a veterinarian. And that veterinarian believed there was a better way to run a dairy farm. The second was a patented filtration system where we could actually take the best parts of milk and provide them to the consumer. The third was state-of-the-art manufacturing to make sure we could get to market quickly with these brands. And the fourth was leveraging the model in the marketplace that we talked about with our Coca-Cola brands. So we looked at information, we looked at brand building, we looked at the, the, the routes to market that we have. So for example, the chilled products are distributed through our warehouse business. Our ambient products are distributed through the bottlers. And then we have natural channel distributors and food service distributors as well. So thus, that's where we can really build our brands and bring those brands to life in North America, which is a key strategic pillar for us. Let's pivot to customer value creation. Having strong brands is a great way to build customer value, but having great customer relationships is a great way to build strong brands. And some of you said to me, how, how is it working in a tough market environment with customers today? And really what I tell you is the key is a couple of things. When you're growing faster than your customer, you're accretive to their business and you're in a different position. So how do you get that way? Well, the way that we do that in Coke North America uh, has art and science to it, and here's the science. The science is we have a collaborative planning process that we use, business planning process that we use with customers that really digs in deep with them to understand their objectives, understand their strategies, de developing joint plans, often beyond beverages. Then we go to our value proposition, which we call the Coca-Cola commitment. And that value proposition brings out unique elements to the customer's needs to, that provides customized solutions to their needs against growth. And that helps us drive our growth faster than them and, makes, and we're accretive to their business. So what's happened? Well, you can see that we've been the number one in ARTD in driving retail value growth for customers. And we're doing it in a way that they feel really good about because they've ranked us at the top quartile of people that do business with them. So we're going to continue to build strong brands and continue to build customer value in North America. And the third element I would say is around, that we're focused on is around building our own capabilities to sustain and repeat results. And the first starts with our refranchise bottling system. You heard James talk about that earlier. You heard some of my colleagues talk about that. But the map is complete. And with that map that's complete, we have an energized bottling system that's investing in the market both in people and capital, to drive results. So we're going to leverage that. The third area, hopefully you had a chance to see to the right here today with our, with our uh, showcase, is around digitization and accelerating that. The first example is SIP and SCAN. Uh, are you familiar with uh, MyCoke Rewards? Used to be on the top of a cap. You'd punch in codes. We've digitized that. Now it's a package to mobile interaction with consumers right away for them to interact with our products and, and receive rewards. And the other area is around e-commerce. So you're able to see that as well in the e-commerce space, which is a broad definition I think James talked about. But we're really focused on e-commerce. From click and collect, we have white papers on that with our customers to make sure we help them in that space. We're working on things such as meal kits. So in the food service, how we participate in meal kits that come to, uh, come to bear. And also forward-looking things like voice. We're actively involved in that. And with our pure play players, the digital shelf. So we're really focused on e-commerce. And then last is a, a productivity mindset. And a productivity mindset that challenges every dollar, that simplifies how we work, that makes sure that we're leveraging technology to do those things as well, to invest back in the business for growth and drive margins. So as you think about Coke North America, there's a couple of things I'd ask you to think about. 
One is it's a big business with big opportunity. The second is there's a proven growth model of how we plan to drive, drive growth in the marketplace and three key strategic pillars to do that. Building strong brands, creating customer value, and then building our own capabilities to sustain and repeat. But the consumer's in charge and the marketplace is evolving and we're gonna to continue to evolve in North America to make sure that we're capturing all the opportunities. So I look forward to working with all of you in my new role and to uh, seeing you out in uh, New York or wherever you might be. And as I close, I wanna leave you with a, a clip from a campaign we're running now, and hopefully you've seen it uh, in your own homes. Uh, but it's a clip that we believe pulls together many of the elements that I've talked about today and helps demonstrate how in North America, we plan to bring beverages for life to life. Thank you and let's roll the clip. Imagine how much good one person can do. Now, imagine a business that employs over 90,000 people in the US alone. Imagine a company of that size dedicated to not only doing good business, but good for the world too. We are the Coca-Cola Company. We didn't just teach the world to sing. We are Coca-Cola and so much more. We're an organic tea company, a coconut water company, a premium juice company. We've got drinks for long days, for birthdays, for turning over new leaves. And everything we make relies on the same thing we all do, clean water. It's why for every drop we use, we work to give one back. We're also helping to replenish the Rio Grande in over 100 communities in nearly every corner of the country. Because chances are, we're in that corner too. We believe our business thrives when our communities thrive, which is just one of the reasons we help make college a reality for thousands of students. Today, companies need to lead more than ever. So we're trying to do just that. Thank you for listening. We're listening too.